The Chandogya Upanishad has a passage that's so perfect for this now. Just as the rivers flowing east and west merge into the sea and become one, forgetting that they were ever separate rivers. So do all creatures lose their separateness when they merge at last into pure beingness. That is exactly where so many of us are right now. And I am, I am just so blessed to witness what's happening right now because we are. We are those, those rivers. The, the densities are dissolving and all of the polarities are dissolving. Good, bad, light, dark, masculine, feminine, just fading into nothingness, right? The illusion just leaves us. And what's happening right now is Gaia is providing new realms, right? Ascended frequencies that are allowing us to feel this in a deeper way than ever before. And this allows us to flow into that ocean of consciousness, infinite Christ, source, mind. Yes? Mm. And it's a beautiful container and a beautiful experience, and we're going to explore that all weekend long. And we're going to focus on becoming the presence. And I heard remastering embodiment, right? Not mastering embodiment. I think we've got that down. But there's a remastering of embodiment that's happening right now that involves the infinite Christ, and the infinite Christ is this vibration that is a natural state of our DNA, of our crystalline light body, of our consciousness, of the ocean of source consciousness. And we move into that in this crystalline temple space. We're holding a very pure, intentional sanctuary for us to explore this as much as possible and go through all the challenges and get all the downloads on what Gaia is doing, what our trajectories are and everything, but we're going to start as masters, setting our intention for our entire ascension. This is personal to you, and it's a question that I always ask in my mastery classes, because we can't do anything until we know what do we want, right? Finding our why, our intention, is key. So, in this now moment, tap in to that infinite ocean and feel your unique expression in there. And Source is just experiencing everything right through us. So, in your uniqueness, for your entire ascension process, just set an intention. What do I want to become? What do I want to experience? How would I like to serve? What would I like to create? Because we're answering that question that comes from source itself, exploring all levels of creation. So for your own personal ascension, Hold that. Hold that intention. Feel it in your heart. The only way it works, you gotta feel it. Feel the freedom of that. Claim your creation. Know that it might shift and change, but the core is there. Divinity, purity. I choose this. Uh, the realm shift. A master once described awakening or self-realization as uh, in, in an interesting way that I would like to share with you right now. He said, it's like walking around with unknown buried treasure underneath, right? You're walking around, you're living your life, 
you're building houses, you're driving cars over it, you're planting things, just living on the land, right, unaware, and then all of a sudden, buried treasure is revealed. And it changes your reality, right? Transformation shakes up your reality, right? That's what we're all going through right now. All of a sudden, there's buried treasure, and in unity consciousness, you don't take the treasure, <laughs> right? And don't tell your neighbors. It's, a, it's awakening and unity consciousness. So, wow, you get curious, you get excited, you call other people into this. Oh my gosh, there's treasure. What else is there? What else is there? Right? And you keep exploring and uncovering and unearthing, and there's celebration right, in that unity, and it's beautiful because it does, it changes your trajectory, it changes your life stream, and the realm shift and what Gaia is doing right now is much like that, because no matter what level of awakening or ascension you've been at, a couple months ago, oh, live stream, March <laughs> 2022, uh, a significant thing happened that allowed Gaia to reveal a whole lot of treasure. And it also reveals, of course, the treasure within. Because all of a sudden you're like, I feel different. Right? It's quite, it's quite beautiful. All right. So, something has changed. Uh, there's a new experience of this treasure. Um, it's the experience of life without density, shadow, or distortion. And I know that busts through a lot of belief systems, but that is a, a very real, true, ascended state of consciousness. And when that starts getting revealed and you start feeling it, I'll go into how that's uh, changing us. But it's like this treasure realization. All of a sudden you're like, oh, that's unity consciousness. Right? All of a sudden it's different. It's quite beautiful. It's a huge jump in frequency, perception, and activation for ascending hearts. Now it's felt as these amplified qualities and sensations of mastery. So, you know, uh, dear sister Kate and I were trying to describe the level of compassion. We're like, it's infinite compassion. Like compassion, especially March 13th, which I'll get back to, um, all of a sudden, it was like a different frequency was flowing through the fields. And if you have the prepared open heart, right, the compassion is gushing. Neutrality, right? The care but don't carry. Just freedom and unconditional love and gratitude. And instead of feeling spacey, there's spaciousness. All of a sudden, the light body is doing something different. The DNA is doing something different. So it's true unity consciousness being unveiled. It, we, we say it's new, but there is in the DNA, right? It's familiar. That's the, the whole treasure thing. Like all of a sudden you're like, oh, there's the true self, right? Dissolves the old self quite quickly. But here on cosmic Christed Gaia, which is the best way um, to describe her right now, is she has gone Christed, not just crystalline, but there's a different level of consciousness that she's able to provide right now. This really touches my heart because after years of gatekeeping and, and working with Gaia specifically, for her to suddenly reveal like a whole new level of herself because she is ascending into a spiritual sun. That's an energy, not an actual star. But all of a sudden she's like, I, uh, please be witness to this. And I'm so honored to witness that because a lot of her messages over the last couple of months since this happened were promises kept. And when she, <laughs> When she says promises kept, like the lineage of all of us who have been here over and over and over, working on ascension and doing this, um, you know, for for quite a long time, to be able to witness her transformation, 
and reveal that level of, of frequency is quite beautiful. And she's shining through the animals and the kingdoms and the elementals. Everything is just vibrating with this level of, uh, it's almost like crystalline plasma, but it's a different frequency. And here's what happened. So magnetospheres are the, are the big piece, like how did this happen? The galactic center flipped polarities a few years ago. And if you're familiar with the galaxy, galactic center is here, we're way out on the edge of a spiral arm, right? So this change in polarity slowly leaks out, right? It emanates out, changing stars. And you know, you've got all the scientists going, wow, that went supernova and that quasar went off and everything. I'm like, it's getting closer, you know, because it's like, it's like a wave. I mean, we always talk about galactic waves, but it is a wave. And it's because of that polarity shift, which means now the galaxy is going to express in a different way. It's happening on a, on a universe level, but here we are the magnetosphere changes for the whole galaxy. And then the sun also changes poles and goes somewhat quadropolar, which is really interesting. And here we are loosening the magnetics and loosening the magnetospheres, which are the veils, you know, they hold the veils in place. So here we are with all these different magnetics going on and all of a sudden different cosmic rays and frequencies are getting in. There's a distinct shift in the quality of radiation from the sun. You've probably noticed everyone's like, oh, the sun used to be yellow. Yeah, we, okay. <laughs> but there's a different frequency and that radiation is the stuff that's mutating our DNA, bringing in different DNA, changing our light body to a crystalline light body, but you're also going to feel it in the crystalline structures. I'll get into that in the next presentation. But it's because of this reunification of the organic stargates. So for those of you who work with Gaia and you're working with a crystalline grid, know that that is a very dynamic system now. It's not locked in place. It's not stuck in density. It's not being controlled. Now there's flow and the stargate opens and then another one opens. You know, it's very dynamic, so you're not going to get ley line only here points. It's gone, right? We're working with a completely different system, completely different flow. So it is an organic restoration of the cosmic flows, right? Which brings us different frequencies, but it also means Gaia herself can now emanate right through that crystalline core, right through the crystalline grid in a more dynamic way which means she's more responsive to the cosmic influxes. This diminishes the veils, right? Because the, the veils were all magnetic base. They were locked in density, right? Now the magnetosphere is like nothing, right? It's so thin, and not only that, but it breaks apart sometimes. During the magnetic storm on March 13th, Cosmic stargates are open. It was a predicted gateway. We had an a extremely intense 24-hour geomagnetic storm that where, where frequencies actually just punctured the magnetosphere. The magnetosphere just went, couldn't handle it. We've all been waiting for this. Like, when is it really going to start shattering? And it starts like stretching, stretching, stretching. And then it got so thin that cosmic rays got directly into where we live, right, in this realm, and all of a sudden, everything starts popping off. People are, gatekeepers are high as a kite, right, just blissed out. I was in Mount Shasta, I'm like laying against a, a, a cedar tree, just going, what, what is this? So much compassion, just like with just one giant heart. It was beautiful. Just spent the whole day with Gaia, like, yes, and, yes, and, yes, and, let's go, let's go, let's flow this light. But it was because of all of a sudden the magnetics changed, and the magnetics hold the astral in place, which is dream state. We've been experiencing that as dream state, and here's the kind of a cool prediction. Um, 
as we go through this thinning of the magnetics and the breaking apart of the astral, you know, and all that 4D realm and everything is just dissolving, there will be, uh, you're probably experiencing this here and there, but there will be passages where the entire population will not know if it's in a dream, if they're in a dream or waking state. Like it'll be so fluid. They'll be like, I just, am I at work? Am I at home? Am I driving? Like everyone's going to have to be careful, like we are, <laughs> right? <laughs> because you're like, woo, you know, all these different realms. But um, it, uh, this is something as way showers, of course, we can we can assist people with. It's like, yeah, it, and this is, I'm giving you the how and the why so that you can pass the information on like, well, it's because of the magnetics, right? All of a sudden you don't have a veil between now I'm going to sleep and now I'm awake, right? Yeah, it's going to be interesting. And time too, time dynamics are held together by magnetics. So that, of course, we've been experiencing time jumps, time in and out, just does anyone even know like what year or day it is? I mean, planning a linear event in all of this, when I just went through a major consciousness shift a couple months ago, I'm like, oh, please just stay with me. I have a higher level, so please just stay with me. Because I'm like, okay. But it's, it's weird. You don't worry. Like even this morning, you know, with, the, with everything that's going on, I was like, all is well, all is well. We'll figure it out. You know, it's just beautiful, really beautiful, the flow that you get into. Because it does, the density that keeps fear and worry and doubt in place, also a lower magnetic, right? So, freedom, freedom, love it. All right, these three phases happen simultaneously, and I want to touch on them. Um, and this is spiritual disclosure when it comes to revelation, right? It's a revelation of self-revelation, right? But these happen together. Revelation of not just what was, but what is, right? And we're seeing that uh, as a global reflection. Obviously, there's a lot of revelation going on right now. People getting impatient. How come is that we're not revealing even more? It is what it is. You know, we go drip by drip so that the collective consciousness can catch up. Uh, resolution, which is also completion of what was, and you're gonna feel that in your journey. When you're done with something, you're done, right? And trying to recreate it, so against the flow, does not work. So there's this resolution of what we were as well, I want to touch on that because a lot of you are going through this rapid shift of identity, losing the identity, and that's part of the resolution. Like you're complete. We've all heard no more karma. No, you don't have to incarnate anymore. You're done. You're going to summarize everything in this journey. And this is because of all of these energies and because these three particular frequencies are happening right now at the same time. Resurrection happens at the same time, which is resuscitation, reanimation, not death, right? It's resuscitation, spiritual resuscitation, and reanimation of the flesh, of the embodiment of the spirit to become the presence, right? That's our task here as star seeds, way showers. Hmm. This is kind of interesting. In order to exist, operate, create in this new realm, in this, you know, we used to call it New Earth, in these new realms of Gaia, these crystalline realms, your path has to include spiritual awareness. You have to be connected to spirit or you won't be able to live on spiritual sun Gaia. Right, that's the trajectory. And I just want everyone to witness, why do you think all these people are interested in yoga and meditation and everything? Like witness that even if somebody hasn't had a massive awakening and they're going into ascension, globally, you can see the trajectory. You can see what's happening, right? That's why, you know, the frequencies are why 
this is happening right now because as a collective, we're on a trajectory where your path must include spiritual presence, awareness, right? Bringing that into everything that you do. You can see how widespread it is right now. It's, it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. And however they get there is however they get there. But the vibration is there. It's literally triggering the DNA. Go take a yoga class. <laughs> Maybe you should meditate, you know. Mm. Yeah, because we are all one. So we reflect the realm shift. All of this, you, you can see the, the revelation, the resolution, the resurrection. That's all, it's all happening through us. Call back on the ocean. Consciousness, no longer separate rivers, right? Everyone is experiencing this. And a source is experiencing it through us. The crystalline structures serve as a conduit. So we're going to talk about building the, the crystalline structures because that ignites that sensation of oneness. You get the stronger activations. You get the stronger energies if you have crystalline in the system to receive and transmit those frequencies. We lose density. You lose your narratives. How many people just lost their own personal story? Just like, <laughs> who am I? Hi, I'm Sandra Walter. It just feels weird, right? <laughs> it just feels weird. Like identity just feels strange. But, but again, it's because of the magnetics, right? It's like, mm, that's what you were in this structure. Now, who are you in this new structure, right? The heart stargate is getting very amplified through this because um, the zero point that we opened that zero point ex exists within your heart. And there's something very interesting happening in this now moment with the crystalline stargate of the heart opening, taking on new realms, taking on new frequencies. That's why a lot of the gatekeepers are getting blown back by these amplified mastery qualities or compassion. Uh, it's gratitude. You just feel like just overwhelmingly grateful for these frequencies flowing through us. And it's because of that coherent heart stargate. So we need to learn a new way of creating. We need to learn how to create in that new light, in that new frequency. And the old way of creation that included mm, maybe uh, control or intentions for manipulation or whatever. There's literally no frequency that will support that. So we're gonna walk through this new way of creating and alignment and what the frequencies will support and what they won't. What they won't. Um, and the, yeah, and this refinement of energies that happens. Now, the division of realms is, can be challenging for a lot of people. And I hear it all the time, and I'm sure you hear it from your clients and the people that you serve. How am I gonna do both? How am I gonna do both? Well, we've been you know, kind of straddling realities for a while, but this, as far as dealing with what we are in right now, without going into trajectories of hey, it's going to be a couple more years of this weird phase for a lot of us. So we walk through this with focus because your focus equals your reality. If everyone can comprehend that the amplified frequencies that are speeding everything up also speed up the return frequency, right? You're putting something out and it's coming back. So you're getting faster information and more information. But you can see when that bounce back effect gets faster and faster and gets into instant manifestation as Gaia supports that now, that your alignment <laughs> is everything, right? That your focus, uh, whatever we aim our presence at will manifest. And I want to say not your mind, not your emotions, not your ego, but whatever you aim your presence at, that's the key to miracles, right? Out of the way, that will be done, right? Whatever you aim your presence at will manifest. 
And Gaia is starting to reveal that to a lot of us, where you're like, wow, it's like hands off the wheel, and you know, the higher, higher self just has it. It's quite beautiful. But the, but the focus on what is our trajectory, what is my intention, will help you get through dealing with watching one reality dissolve as another amplifies, right? Right now, all of our focus goes on amplifying the new because it creates a higher vibration that literally dissolves that old thing, old thing faster. So all of us are qualifying our, our thoughts and our emotions and our deeds in order to learn how to align with that higher frequency and can be consistent, uh, responsible creators. Perception as source is another thing that you can apply to your own personal journey. Always hold back to the cosmic perspective. It allows us to be the eyes of source, to realize, right, self-realization. I am source having an experience. Reheart yourself whenever you feel like the external is getting too strange. And it's nothing you have to focus on at all. Right? The dissolvement or wanting things to dissolve faster is not our focus, right? We put our focus on, or what's my core intention? Mm, let me put my focus there because I've put my focus on the old or how difficult it is or how challenging it is. What do you get? More, right? More of that. So you shift your own personal magnetic. And then we learn multi dimensional creation, which we're going to get into, that's the trajectory. That's witnessing. All of us are going to learn, like especially in like crystal temple spaces like this, right? We learn intentional creation. You can see the trajectory of what the intention is, and then you're going to, you plant that almost like a timeline. Remember timelines used to be like that? It's like this, this different frequency is like a crystalline trajectory of possibility, but you don't own it. You don't try to steer other people into it, right? Because that's old light dynamics, right? That's what's been going on on the planet for a while. So we're learning this new way of creation. And as long as that creation and that unified intent, because it has to be unity, it has to be applied unity consciousness. So it can't be you trying to man manifest your beach house in your kitchen. You know, you just, come on, come on, right? It's just not gonna work. It's not gonna work unless that beach house is going to serve a lot of people and you have higher intention and you're calling other people into it, right? You're gonna have to align with unity consciousness. Uh, the, this acceleration fade, um, just a message we won't have to witness the entire dissolvement of the old reality. Just let that land. You know, if people feel like the, the journey's been too long, too challenging, change your focus, change your trajectory, and know that that's handled. Right? That's going to fade out because... The brighter thing, what Gaia is doing right now, what the Stargates are doing right now, what DNA is providing for us right now, is of such a higher vibration, it's like the old reality doesn't exist, just like the old self doesn't exist, etc. So if you keep pointing your trajectory and your focus toward the desired outcome, you won't have to be entangled with the dissolvement of that. And there's... There's a, a lot of, um, earlier in my journey, I was just asking my star family, how, how exactly does this work? Is it just like all of a sudden? And, and they said, it'll be like waking up from a dream. You won't remember. You know, you'll have some core wisdom and lessons and everything, but the old self is just like, you're just turning off a switch. All of a sudden, whew, you find yourself in the new realm. And as freaky as that sounds and as bizarre and everything, I mean, we're taking the steps and no predictions on how long that's going to 
unfold, you know, how long it's going to take. Um, but as all these different dynamics and everything pull apart, you can see how different we feel and how different we behave when you become the presence. Everything is just handled, taken care of. And let's remember that it's a privilege to be awake, to be aware, to be able to gather, to be able to study together and explore together. So when you're feeling challenged or if you're sitting at home or whatever you're doing, you know, social media, etc., making you feel like, mm, people are keep catching up or what about my friends and everything, shh, come back to your core intention and remember what a luxury it is to be able to get together. We all saw what happened, right, the last couple of years. Really flow into the gratitude of being together every time you cross paths with someone, right? Just celebrate that unified humanity. It's quite beautiful. Okay. So we're going to learn the new qualities of creation. Plain and simple, if the qualities and conditions are met, then activation, manifestation can occur. So it's all based on frequency. It's all based on the quality of light that you're dealing with. So it goes beyond uh, thought or changing your neural pathways and everything. This is going into like a much higher frequency, and we'll get into the crystalline light body next. But we're becoming that presence, that crystalline conduit, and that is the new creation, and we're all learning how to deal with that presence, because you'll notice you walk through your day and things self-correct. You know, the live stream was down, I'm just backstage, I'm like, higher levels, just take care of it. Right? It just, things happen. Right? And you don't have to, there's no efforting. There's no, I need to manifest, it's really becoming the presence, it's different. Remember the quote that uh, which you are seeking is seeking you? That's the vibrational match, right? We can just align with that frequency. Everything starts unfolding in a very different way, and you have to prove it to yourself. That's the thing. When you have evidence, it, you can remind yourself. You know, when things get tough, you're like, no, remember that time? Totally aligned, everything happened. You, know, you can uh, remind yourself as you go through this journey. Okay, quickly. Yeah, we become the beingness. And I, I want to note that the parameters for creation are changing with this realm shift. If there's anything we can learn from what's going on right now, it's that parameters for creation are totally different. So it's not like, oh, I had intention and I put all my focus there and I try, you know, it's, it's different. It's a little bit of a hands-off, but it's consistently, you know, working on the frequency and the focus so that that can unfold properly, in alignment with divine will, in alignment with divine perfection, the proper application of life force, right? A whole different way of creating, which we'll dig into. Let's have a quick mastery technique. Let's pick a quality of presence. Whether it's, uh, maybe you have a personal one that you use out of your mastery qualities. This is from the mastery intensive. Just pick one for the weekend, not forever. And just feel this in your heart. Take it into your heart. Take it into being a responsible creator. And before we take a pause here, we just want to set this in the field. Your own personal field. I am the presence of fill in the blank in these realms. I am grace. I am compassion. I am faith. Pick one. Feel it in the heart. And you're going to practice while we are together for these two days of emanating that quality, being that quality. And maybe you'll see it amplified in others, right? The divine reflection, 
oh, that turned on compassion. And that other person, because I'm holding the vibration of compassion. I really want this to be transformational for everyone. So hold that frequency and that intention all through lunch, all through Sunday. Hold that in your heart. 